Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it getting close to the edge because I think we're getting very close to the edge of what? Of a either a minor correction like what we had back here in May, the zigzag pattern in May, or a much more severe correction, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So let's start off here with the daily chart of the Dow Industrials. It was up 109 points on Friday. And uh, just a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of compression going on with the price action on Thursday, Friday. Also on Monday was very, very tight, 72 points between high and low. So right now we're kind of hanging in there. We haven't really started to get a breakdown in the price. Uh, but watching this very closely, you know, for the kind of breakdown that we got here in September, at the end of July, and at the end of April into the beginning of May, okay? So for the week, the Dow was down 129.27 points. It was the first decline of the last, we had four weeks in a row to the upside on the Dow. And all of the major indices were slightly down this week, okay? So a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a pause. We'll see if it's going to be the start of something, and it could very well be. Uh, the Dow pattern, the Elliott Wave pattern that I've been working in here, let me get rid of these Fibonacci projections for now, um, and let me get, a a get rid of a little bit of clutter. All right, so the pattern that we're working is a uh, an ending diagonal pattern for Wave 5, and this assumes that Intermediate Wave 4 right here was complete at the end of December. So the thing about a three-wave move, when you get a three-wave move like what we had back in 2018, it's either a complete correction or it is part of a much bigger correction, okay? So right now, this scenario assumes it's a complete correction with Intermediate Wave 4 being finished and that we're in um, Intermediate Wave 5 of Primary Wave 5 and a much bigger Cycle Wave 5, okay? So... What are we doing within that? Within that, I believe that we're in the third, and we may have just completed it, the third minor wave. And each one of these should be a zigzag, which is the way I've got it labeled in here. And my expectation would then be that we're going to get a zigzag pattern down here for minor wave four, and that it could very easily be very similar to what we had back here in May. Okay, which ended on, well, I guess it was June 2nd, something like that, if I got the date right, June 3rd. Okay, so that's the picture, that's the expectation, but it could also be part of a bigger, more complex corrective pattern. And let me zoom out of this a little bit, and let me get rid of that, and get rid of some clutter for now. Okay, so this is what could also be going on, that this first three-wave move that we had down here was wave A. And when you have the first three-wave move as a wave A, then that tells you that you have a large flat pattern, uh, Elliott Wave flat pattern that's unfolding. So then you expect a five-wave, or I'm sorry, a three-wave move for B, okay, up like this. So when you look at that, you say, well, okay, well, what have we got? The complicating factor, what has really given us a little bit of a hard time is everything that's happened in here since uh, really, you know, back here in May, all through the summer and into September, what was going on in here? What best describes this, if we're not, if we don't have it labeled as an ending diagonal pattern, is that what this is, is a B wave, a triangle, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Let me zoom in. Three wave structures for A, B, C, D, E, and then we're off and running in here to complete this C wave of an A, B, C for the, for the uh, minor B wave, okay? All right, so that's the picture that we've got. And so now the same challenge in terms of trying to figure out the wave structure of this last move is what we've been doing. But it's similar, same exact thing to what I'm doing, whether it's this pattern or whether it's this pattern, okay? It's the same thing. I'm looking for a five wave move within this wave C, either an impulse or an ending diagonal. 
And most of the time, and the way this has been unfolding, is it looks like an impulse wave structure. Let's go down and take a look at the hourly view. Okay, so this is the view that we've got going on. This is the wave structure that we've got in here. Here's what I think is unfolding. And when I looked at this, this third wave is really not a normal length wave three, but this whole pattern fits a very sharp wave two pull back, a sideways to slightly down wave four, and then we now got an extended wave five. And then when I look at this and say, well, you know, how does this wave five compare to uh, wave one plus three? Because that's when I have a very short wave three, that's the calculation that I use for the Fibonacci projection. And what I'm looking for is 100% where they're equal. That's exactly the high that we had back up here on what day was this? This was the 19th, okay? And so then we got a pretty strong little move that came down out of that. We got fairly oversold, and now we've bounced from that. So the real key is, are we, is this the high? And we're off and running and we've started the new wave structure to the downside? Or have we got more to come? Right now, I've got, I'm leaning into the fact that I'm watching this. I think this is a good, there's a good chance that this is the high. Okay, so let's go back to the daily view. So if this is the high and this is a flat, what am I expecting? I'm expecting a much bigger, more severe correction to, to come down in the form of the five wave pattern and come all the way down into the neighborhood of where we ended in December of 2018. We'll have a better idea how that's unfolding as this wave structure unfolds and then we can make some better projections on the wave fives down. If we come down here in a three wave with wave four and we don't take out this wave too low, then we're still in this pattern as a possible unfolding. So those are the, you know, those are the road signs that we're looking for. Those are the guidelines that we're looking at in here. And we'll watch and see because why do I say that in terms of an ending diagonal? Well, wave four cannot go beyond the end of wave two. Okay, wave three had to go above wave one. Wave four cannot go below wave two. Okay, wave three can never be the shortest wave. So right now, that's what we're looking at, and we'll see, are we going to get a May-type correction, or are we going to get a much more severe five-wave-type correction? Let's take a look at the VIX. Now, there are a lot of things that are signaling kind of waving caution flags right now. The VIX is just one of them, all right? So why do I say that? Well, I say that because it's pretty low. It's down here around 12. It's bouncing around down in the basement. It's been... Uh, 12 to 13 uh, in here for several weeks now. Very similar to the type of activity that happened in July before we got the explosion. And very similar to what happened back in April before we got the explosion in May. Okay, so these are the three clusters of what's happened in the year. Let me go zoom out a little bit so you can see the bigger picture. Okay, so this was... This is how severe it got in December and how elevated it got. Now, that's not as severe that it's, you know, that's not the most severe the VIX has ever gotten, but it, it in most re, in the last year, year and a half it is. Okay, so this is the picture for all of 2019 right now. And you can see we've had three times. We are in the third time where we've clustered down here very low. So I think when you look at this, and you see the kind of calm before the storm that is going on right now, okay? The no fear type of aspect uh, to what's happening in the markets. And where we're at in the price action that I just talked about, I think we're getting very, very close to and may have already started uh, that next corrective move. I want to take a quick look at the German DAX. Okay, so here's the daily price action on the German DAX. And of course, this is a very big uh, index in Europe, okay? And so we, we know, you know, Europe's got its issues. And what's happened here last, this last week, the DAX had three closes the last three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three closes below that blue line, the 10-day moving average, okay? Well, that's a little bit of my signal that I'm looking for. Now, we haven't had a breakdown, haven't had a break of these lows just yet. 
that's what I'm going to be watching in here. Uh, so it's really interesting that the DAX, the other aspect of this dotted line, that's the all-time high on the DAX. The all-time high on the DAX is back in January of 2018, January of 2018. It did not take it out in September of 2018. It did not take it out like the Dow in July of this year, okay, in September of this year. It did not push to any kind of higher highs at all. And so now watching this really closely to see, does this start to roll over? This is the weekly view in here in terms of what happened this last week, down 78 points. That's not a huge move. A little bit of a engulfing, bearish engulfing type look to it. Uh, so we'll see if we start to get the breakdown in here on the German DAX and rolling over to the downside. All right, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, hit the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, hit that subscriber button. If you like to have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, go on over to joehenches.net and check out the website, the, uh, the membership over there. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.